What do you think of uh, Max Tegmark who wrote the book Mathematical Universe? Mm -hmm. So do you think, just lingering on that point, you think at the end of the day, the future generations will all be mathematicians? <laughs> meaning <laughs> meaning the ones that deeply understand the way the universe works. At the core, is it just well, mathematics? At the core of, you know, I would say mathematics is one half of the core. Mm -hmm. So the, the book is called Love and Math. Yeah. Okay, so these are the two pillars, <laughs> if you will, yeah. in my view. Yes. In other words, you can't cover everything by math. So mathematics gives you tools, it gives you way a, 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 a kind of a clear uh, vision. But mathematics by itself is not enough for, for one to have a harmonious and, uh, and uh, balanced life. You know, so I I am suspicious of any theory that declares that everything is mathematics. So math can generate things that are beautiful, uh, but it can't explain why it's beautiful. Math, you could say, is a way to discern patterns, to find regularities yeah. in the universe, and both physical and mental universe. Mm -hmm. the mathematics explores the mind as much as it explores um, the physical world around us. And it helps us to find those patterns, um, which kind of, which makes our perception more sophisticated, our ability to perceive things such as beauty, you know, and uh, it sharpens our ability to see, to see beauty, to understand beauty. So our world becomes more complex um, from thinking that our, that our, that, that earth is flat, we go to realizing that it is round, that it's shaped as a sphere, so that we can actually travel around the Earth, you know? So there isn't a place where we hit the end, so to speak. And then, um, proceeding in the same vein, then Einstein's general relativity theory tells us that our space-time is not flat either. This is much harder to, to imagine, that bent, a bent, three-dimensional or four-dimensional, three-dimensional space or four-dimensional space-time, because this idea that the space around us is flat is so deeply entrenched. Mm -hmm. And yet we know from this, from this theory and from the experiments that have confirmed it, that a, a, re, a ray of light bends around a star as if being attracted by the, by the force of gravity. But in fact, the force of gravity is the bending. It's just that it's not only the bending of the space, it's also the bending of space-time. Mm -hmm. There is a curvature, not only between special, spatial dimensions, the way parallels and meridians come together. In a small scale, they look like perpendicular lines, but if you zoom out, you see that the space, are, are they curving the space. They are, they are sort of the, the tracks along which the space gets curved. That's, that's the, that would be the curvature of spatial dimensions. But in fact, now throw in time, and one time, imagine a sphere which lives, which has uh, one of the meridians correspond to time, and <laughs> yeah. parallels correspond to space. I can't imagine it, but you can I can write a mathematical formula expressing that curvature. And that's, in fact, that curvature is responsible for the force of gravity attraction between, the, the sort of simplest instantiation of it, attraction between two planets or between two human beings, <laughs> for that matter. Yeah, the time, Bending time, it's not very nice that what that theory did to time because it feels like the marching of time forward is fundamental to our human experience. The arrow of time marching forward nicely seems to be the only way we can understand the universe. And the fact that you can start- Up to now, up to now. There are people who claim that they can, that they have, they possess other ways of, of experiencing it. So truly can visualize messing with time. Well, messing with time, but not necessarily messing with time, because one point of view is that, you know, I think, who, who was it? I think William Blake, who wrote that uh, eternity loves time production. So one point of view is that it is eternity which is fundamental, where time stands still, which our mind conceptualizes as the time. So, but in fact, you know, it's not something mystical. If you think about when you uh, about it, when you're really absorbed in something, 
time does st- stand still. And then you look at the clock and it's like, oh my God, two hours have passed. And it felt yeah. like a couple of seconds. When you are absorbed, when you're in love, when you are passionate about something, when you're creating something, you are, we lose ourselves and we lose the sense of time and space for that matter, you see. Mm-hmm. So there is only that which is happening, that creative pr- process. Um, so we, I think that this, this is familiar to all of us. And we may be actually the closest to the truth at that moment, to yes. the true and, nature and so of the, reality. So yes, so then there is a point of view that this is where we are, the, yeah. we are who we are <laughs> at our sort of fundamental, at our fundamental level. And after that, the mind comes in and tries to conceptualize it. It's like, oh, because I was writing something. Um, I was writing a book, I was painting this painting, or maybe I was watching this painting and got totally absorbed in it. Mm-hmm. Or I fell in love with this person, that's what happened. But in the moment when it's happening, you're not thinking about it. <laughs> you're yeah. just there. Yeah, we construct narratives around the set of memories that that's... seem to have happened in sequence, or at least that's the way we tell ourselves that. And we also have a bunch of weird human things like consciousness and the experience of free will that we chose yeah. a set of actions as the time unrolled forward. Right. And we are intelligent, conscious agents making t- taking those actions. But what if all of that is just... An illusion? An illusion, and a yeah. na- nice narrative we tell ourselves. Sure. That's a really difficult it's thing possible. to internalize. And imagine, imagine that to make it really catch 22, <laughs> that our, imagine that our minds are set, are set up in such a way yeah. that they can't approach the world or experience otherwise. So in other words, to understand, to see that it from a more um, kind of all encompassing point of view, we have to step out of the mind. Mm-hmm. Well, I wonder what's the more honest way to look at things. <laughs> but I think we like to be to play with time. I think we like to play with these experiences, with all the drama of it, with all the memories, with all the tribulations. Yeah. I think we that's... love it, we love it. <laughs> Otherwise we wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> I think that's, or Earth loves it. The evolutionary process sure. somehow loves it. Sure. Whatever, whatever this thing that's being created here on Earth, it seems to like to create, like to allow its children to play with certain, uh, Yeah truths that they hold, the subjective truths that are useful for the competition or whatever, this dance that we call life broadly is defined, Absolutely. not just humans. 